and then a song of country bumpkin flirtation on the very brink of bad taste. And now, at one quick hearing, no one would say that there's anything particularly Jewish in those songs. Well, perhaps not, although I could find you a flick or two here and there, but let's not quibble. Here is one from the same cycle that I feel has a distinctly Jewish flavor from beginning to end. It's called Das Irdische Leben, or The Earthly Life. And I think you'll agree with me that the flavor comes partly from the Phrygian element. Remember the Phrygian mode? And partly for other reasons, which I'm sure you'll hear for yourselves. Do you agree that that has a Jewish flavor? Apart from the Phrygian element and the constant chromatic wailing. <laughs> Apart from all that, it's a peculiarly Malarian portrait of poverty, starvation, the widowed mother dealing with the problems of her hungry child. I say Malarian because through him the abject lonely, poverty-stricken situation comes to us as from the ghetto, because the ghetto was Mahler's connection with poverty, starvation, and loneliness, see? So much for the earthly life, and I would like you to listen to its spiritual opposite, a song from the same cycle called The Heavenly Life, Das Himmlische Leben, which indeed arises from the same poverty, starvation, and all the assorted ailments 
that beset the people of Central Europe during the endless centuries of reformational wars. Only this is the other side of that coin, that same starving child's vision of what it's going to be like in heaven, and all expressed in his own totally Christian, childlike terms. Naturally, it's mostly about food. In heaven, there is no end to the number of fish that come swimming down the street to be caught by St. Peter in his very own net, nor is there any shortage of meat. St. John himself brings the little lamb to be slaughtered with not a trace of shame or sense of sin. What you are now hearing is not only a song from this Knaben Wunderhorn, but a song which turns out through Mahler's magic to constitute the entire final movement of his fourth symphony. Not a flick of Jewishness anywhere, musical or otherwise, but the tender poetry that flows from the innocent faith of this child's mind is, oddly enough, not unlike the grim poetry that issues from the mind of another young boy whom we met earlier in this program. Remember the little drummer boy being led to the gallows to expiate an unnamed crime? They are both the same little boy. In fact, they are one with the other little boy we heard pleading with his mother for bread. And all three boys are named Gustav Mahler. 